done it again, boys. Oh my god. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Philly loses again. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to Nizzy Sports Chat. <laughs> I am your host, Nizzy. And in this video, guys, we're going to be breaking down the atrocious loss by the Sixers last night. <laughs> oh, I love it, you guys. I love it. Oh, sorry for that, but... Oh, I'm a Raptors fan, so it's always a wonderful thing when we're watching the Sixers lose. All the Sixers fans out there thought it was this their year this year. They thought they were taking home the chip. Obviously, Brooklyn Nets got eliminated by the Bucks. This was definitely one of the best opportunities the Sixers would have had to push through to a finals in years. Years and years and years since they've been able to make it that far. So, But once again, they flub it up in Game 7. Trey Young hits a couple daggers late in the game. Huge steal by Gallinari with like 40 seconds left. Takes it to the rack for the dunk. And that pretty much sealed the deal right there. So now we got the final four set, you guys, in the NBA playoffs. Atlanta and Milwaukee. And Phoenix and LA, obviously. Uh, Phoenix took game one yesterday early on in the day there. Nice little triple-double from uh, Devin Booker against uh, LA Clippers yesterday. But we're not here to talk about that yet, you guys. We're going to be talking about this um, embarrassing flub up by the Philadelphia 76ers. Guys should have handled Atlanta in five. Should have been Atlanta in five all day, and they just absolutely butchered this one. I mean, I think if my Raptors were in there, we would have been advancing. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Obviously, with all the injuries and stuff this year, we couldn't make it that far. But, uh, I mean, this is an embarrassment for Philly, man. Biggest stat of the night right here, you guys. 17 turnovers for Philadelphia. Eight turnovers alone for Joel Embiid. I mean, that's crazy. When you're big man, who's not your primary ball handler, he's your primary scorer, but he's not your primary ball handler. And the guy ends up having eight turnovers. He had two turnovers from Ben Simmons as well. So 10 turnovers from your top two guys on your team, which is just atrocious. Tough to win when you're allowing that many turnovers. I believe they had... 15 or 20 points off of the turnovers as well last night uh did the hawks so they they took advantage of that one pretty good against uh philly there obviously philly botched it in the fourth quarter once again uh ben simmons doesn't take a shot in the fourth quarter once again this is his fourth game now you guys fourth game in a row fourth game in a row ben simmons does not take a shot in the fourth quarter i mean i just don't understand it the guy had an open dunk. I don't know if this was in the fourth or if this was earlier in the game, but it's a mental note that I took. Guy beats his man, goes in for the dunk, and ends up just passing off to another sixer there, and then he flubs up the lay-in. I mean, and you've seen there was a video of surfacing online of Joel Embiid's reaction to that because he's standing out at the three-point line when Ben Simmons makes his little move there, drives into the paint, has an easy dunk or lay-in, whichever which he chooses. Decides to just pass off an easy dunk to his uh, teammate who's contested by another player underneath the rack. And they end up flubbing the shot. And Atlanta ends up taking possession of the ball there. You'd seen Joel Embiid at the top of the key or the top of the three-point line just shaking his head. Just no idea what's going on through Ben Simmons' mind there. I mean, the guy is clearly scared to shoot anything. You think a dunk, the guy, he's, the dude's like six foot ten. You think he wouldn't be scared to go up and just dunk it. He hardly got a jump even to get up there. But the guy won't even dunk the ball right now. I mean, his confidence is at an all-time low. This is uh, very, very bad for Sixers fans. Um, especially the guy just finished, I think, runner-up for the Defensive Player of the Year. Um, and then off on the offensive end, he's got to be runner-up for the worst Offensive Player of the Year. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just been atrocious all the way around for Ben Simmons this playoffs. Obviously, the guy can defend, but who cares if you can defend if you can't score anything? I mean, the guy's getting paid 30 plus million dollars a year, and he can't even put the ball in the hoop. Probably the, one of the most important things that you need to be able to do as a point guard is be able to shoot. And uh, that's probably his worst attribute by far. He's going to need to put in some major work this offseason if he wants to have a futile career coming up in the future. Um, five points for Ben Simmons last night, you guys. Not enough. This was his third game, I believe, scoring under 10 points. So game five, game six, and game seven, he was under 10 points for all of those games, which is just atrocious. I mean, who? I, it's so rare to see a starting point guard score this little and not take any shots like that. Um, he did have decent other stats. He had eight boards and 13 assists, which is always expected. The guy always has been good with assists and getting rebounds because he's six foot ten. 
But uh, the points, man, he's got to get a lot better at that. The fact that he hasn't been able to get over 10 points in the final three games, I mean, you could pretty much guarantee that's why Philly's lost. Obviously, Tobias Harris hasn't been super outstanding. He did play a little bit better in Game 7 with 24 points. Um, Seth Curry, I believe, had 12 or 16 points in Game 7. Um, so you had some of your second and or your third and fourth options step up for you, but when your secondary option and Ben Simmons does nothing to help you out on the offensive end, he basically is a pylon standing in the corner out there. Um, it just makes it really hard for that offensive to flow naturally um, and for people to get into their proper sets and be able to run proper plays because if the play ends up coming around and kicking out to Ben Simmons and he's got to be the guy to take the shot, the play's broken because he ain't going to shoot. You know what I mean? He's just going to break the play right there. He's not going to shoot. He's going to pass it up. He's going to turn it over, do something stupid with the ball. So makes it tough on the rest of the team to be able to get into their sets and their proper movements on the offensive end when uh, you got one guy just standing around there. He's afraid to shoot. Pretty much is null and void on the offensive end, right? So pretty embarrassing loss, in my opinion, for the Sixers. Um, credit to the Atlanta Hawks stepping up huge. These guys are Big time road players. I mean, I believe they won three out of the four on the road. They also were whooping up the Knicks on the road in uh, round one there. So these guys can play very well on the road. They got that underdog mentality right now, especially because Trey Young was snubbed from the All Star. No one else got any uh, first team, second team honors, no defensive honors, um, nothing like that. So big time snub for everyone from Atlanta. Um, they're obviously playing with a bit of a chip on their shoulder right now. I'm just playing hard nose, hard nose style of basketball right now, not giving up, fighting hard till the very end, scrapping and clawing away. Um, their new interim coach there after they fired their coach midseason, he's been doing a great job for them as well, making proper adjustments, keeping the confidence up within his team, no matter how, how far down they get. Obviously, they had some crazy comebacks in game, uh, what was it, I think, game four and five there. They came back from 17 down and then came back from 26 down in game five. Um, so just an outstanding performance by Atlanta. I don't think any of us basketball fans expected this from Atlanta Hawks this postseason. I personally thought the Knicks were going to deal with them in round one, and they just proceeded to absolutely dust up the Knicks in five games there. Um, and then they go and beat uh, the better team in the Philadelphia 76ers in the seven-game series. Um, Trey Young, not too... Not too good of a game from him, but just made clutch, clutch buckets. That's the big thing with this guy. He doesn't have a great shooting percentage. He's been struggling with a shot quite a, quite a bit this series, to be honest. He only shot 5 of 23 from the field last night. 21 points, 3 boards, and 10 assists. Um, but he comes up clutch in clutch time moments. He had that big 3 to put him up by 6 with, I believe, 2 minutes to go in the 4th. A couple clutch floaters in the lane. A couple clutch assists. Um, so even though he may not be scoring... At a lightning pace all game long, and he's missing a lot of shots. He always seems to come through in the clutch and be hitting those clutch shots or the clutch assists for his team, making making the right play at the right moment in the game and coming through on it. So credit to Trey Young. Um, Kevin Herter had an outstanding game, probably the biggest one of the biggest reasons alongside uh, John Collins and Trey Young as to the reason why the Atlanta Hawks won the game. Herter was outstanding, shooting 10 of 18 from the field, 27 points, 7 boards, and 3 assists. I mean, the guy was just dicing them up. And he was making difficult, difficult shots. He was not just banging in wide open shots. He was hitting step back fades, turnaround fades, um, contested three balls. I mean, the dude was hitting some very tough shots um, and came up super clutch for the Atlanta Hawks there in that game. So credit to him as well, shooting a nice stroke as well, 10 of 18 from the field. So John Collins had a nice game for you as well for Atlanta with 14 points and 16 boards. Nice double-double. Um so you had a lot of little role players step up big time for Atlanta, obviously with Gallinari and Lou Will, uh, two very key veterans coming off the bench for you. Those guys helped out a lot this series, um, just getting you buckets and, you know, being that veteran presence on the floor with the second unit. Um, so yeah, overall, really good performance by Atlanta. Don't want to discredit them beating Philly, but I think the bigger story here is Philly just absolutely blowing it up here. I mean, Doc Rivers once again loses another game seven. I mean, comes from the Clippers, comes right over here and just brings that losing mentality into the playoffs for the Sixers. I mean, he is now six and nine, six wins, nine losses in game sevens. So a losing record in game sevens. That's a lot of game sevens to be in as well over the years. I mean, clearly that means his team's not very good at closing out, which we've seen here again with Philly. He had the same problem when they were up three to one last year, the Clippers were, and then they lose it uh, to Denver in game seven. So this is back-to-back -back years where you see Doc Rivers-led teams going out in the first round, or uh, second round, sorry, 
in seven games. Um, and yeah, man, just not good enough. Joel can't do it by himself. No discredit to him. Obviously, the eight turnovers did not help one bit um, yesterday. Um, but he still had 31 points, 11 rebounds, three assists, and a steal and a block on top of that. So still played pretty well. He's still a great, great player. I was really impressed, actually, with Joel Embiid this this uh, series because he did have that torn meniscus. And he was still playing through it, gritting through the pain. And still averaging 30-plus a game, over 10 boards a game. I mean, the guy played outstanding all series long. And I honestly kind of feel for the guy. Um, not having very much help with Ben Simmons as his running mate there. They're going to have to figure something out here, either whether it be trading him, um, putting him into more of a diminished role where he's more of like a just a defensive player where you can maybe throw him in at a small forward or a power forward slot um, where he's not the primary ball handler because they're going to need to get Joel like a legitimate point guard. I mean, ideally, if they could, if we could sign and trade, give them Lowry. Lowry can go home and play for Philly for a couple of years. I think if they would have took... A sign and trade. We were, I think, we wanted Matisse Thibel um, for Lowry and maybe a pick <coughs> in a trade uh, before the deadline this year. If they would have made that trade, I guarantee you Philly was coming out of this round with Kyle Lowry on their team. Um, the dude is just a floor general who would have been able to help them out so much. Not to mention that he can actually shoot. Ben Simmons, he can actually shoot. Yeah, Kyle Lowry can shoot it. You guys would have been way better off if you would have had Kalo with you. Um, and he would have been happy to be there, obviously, because it's his hometown team in the Philly 76ers. Um, but nonetheless, we'll have to see what happens for the Sixers this offseason now. They're going to need to make some changes. I do like their role players around the team, but when, you're, when your second star is not even getting 10 points a game, when he averages almost 20 in the regular season, and he's averaging below 10 points a game in the playoffs, I mean, that's just atrocious, and something's got to change. He's not even taking shots anymore, so... One one thing I'll make note of you guys, if you never take a shot, you'll never make one. So it's pretty tough for Ben Simmons to make any shots because he never shoots. Um, and the only way to get better is to shoot. So the guy's got to just put the fear aside and who cares if you miss some shots, take them anyways. Remember Kobe, Kobe as a rookie man. Kobe was just bricking him up from everywhere. Didn't care, kept shooting, wasn't scared, wasn't fearful of missing the shot. Didn't care, would take it in the last second. Didn't care if he missed 10 in a row, he'd keep shooting, right? And then what happened? Kobe became one of the best scorers in the game that ever lived. You know what I mean? Because he wasn't afraid to shoot and just kept working on it, kept getting better at it. So it's possible Ben Simmons can build a jump shot, but uh, he's got to want to improve and he's got to, you know, put in the effort, put in the work to be able to get there. So very interesting, you guys. We'll have to see what happens now in the final series between the Bucks and the Hawks. Personally, I think this should be the Bucks all the way. Personally, in my opinion, you guys, the Bucks should be able to win the championship this year. I mean, they've been gifted some great opportunities here. You got the Lakers out in the West. Um, Clippers are without Kawhi right now. They might not even be able to make it out. And then the Phoenix Suns, I just think the matchup isn't that great for the Bucks and or for the Suns against the Bucks. I think the Bucks just got a little bit bigger of a lineup against them. We'll be able to handle them a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, man, I think if the Bucks can squeak by Atlanta here in the conference finals the Bucks should be able to have their best opportunity since Giannis has been around to win a championship so it's going to be interesting you guys the final four is now set um haven't had I think they're showing a stat on ESPN or Sports Center last night the last championship won by these four teams was I believe Milwaukee in 1971 <laughs> so it's been what that's that 50 years it's been 50 years around there since uh, one of these four teams has brought home a chip so it's kind of exciting gonna to get to see a new team uh, bring home a championship for the first time in a long time. Um, second time in a few years, because obviously two years ago, the Raptors brought their first championship home, which was a treat to see as a Raptors fan. And now uh, two years later, we got uh, four more teams who haven't won in a long time. So this is exactly what I want to see as an NBA fan. I'm sick of seeing the same uh, big market teams win every single time. You know, the New Yorks and the L.A.s, and I guess New York hasn't been in there for a while, but, you know, the Bostons and the Miamis and the L.A.s and shit like that. I'm just tired of seeing those teams win the chips and these super teams. I'm glad to see all the super teams are out now. So should be an exciting Final Four here, you guys. We'll see what happens. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Do you think Philly 76ers got to get rid of Ben Simmons? Do you think he'll be able to build up a jump shot? I know it's been, I don't even know how many seasons he's been in the league now. I think it's been four or five years, and the guy still can't shoot, so... Might be long gone and done with on the jump shot, but we'll have to see. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. What do you think the chances are of the Hawks being able to take down the Bucks in the next series? Curious to get your guys' thoughts on that. And 
your thoughts on the uh, 76ers and Atlanta series. So anyways, you guys, appreciate the support. Thank you again for watching this video. And once again, this is Nizzy with Nizzy Sportscast. Signing out.